Hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. I hope you enjoy the video. In this video we are going to take a look on something called basement walls and how we can deal with those things in Autodesk Robot. Now before I start of course I must give a small introduction about what basement walls are. So basically I have a video here that I want to show you. Uh, basement walls as the name suggests are walls you being used in the basement. And they are used to retain all kinds of soil and maybe moisture that could infiltrate the basement because the basement is below the surface of the surrounding ground. Now usually the basement walls um, could be including the columns, like columns could be integrated in those basement walls or could not be integrated in the basement walls. It depends on the design. That's the first thing. The second thing is that basement walls could be spanning from the bottom of the basement all the way to the slab of the basement um, or could actually be just a cantilever basement wall. If it spans all the way to the slab then there is a connection between the basement wall and the slab and this needs to be taken into account. If it doesn't then well it doesn't. Because basement walls are under the ground then waterproofing is important and we usually use this sealant as you can see in the video that I will show you right now. You, we usually use the sealant before casting concrete so that we can waterproof the uh, connection of the concrete. Because, you know, when you, a cold joint happens or when a joint between an old cast concrete and a new cast concrete happens, such joint is usually uh, permeable for water. And, of course, because we do not want to damage our structure, we need to waterproof that thing. So, well, that's everything I wanted to talk about. Now before I start, I need to first of all very quickly compare about three types of uh, walls that are used in structures. Uh, the first type is of course the retaining wall. Uh, the second type is something called the shear wall. And the third type is, well, the basement wall. They have some characteristics in common and they also of course have their individual characteristics. Now retaining walls and basement walls are similar by retaining soil. That's one of the similarities between the two walls. However, a difference between the two walls here is that retaining walls are standalone structures. Like retaining walls is usually just a standalone structure. It's not connected to anything. It's just is, it just is there. However, basement walls are integrated structures, meaning that they are part of the full structure that you are constructing. And as the name suggests, are basically part of the basement. And, uh, of course, there are more differences in terms of the checks that you have in the retaining wall. Because it is a standalone structure, you need to check this structure for overturning and sliding and uh, slope stability. For the basement, usually the checks are not done, the stability checks are not done, done to the basement, but are done to the structure in general. And it's very rare that you have a structure that could fail in any of the typical retaining wall failures because the structure is usually surrounded by soil from all four sides. So those forces should cancel each other. Of course, that's not the case if you have a structure on a slope if you have a structure on a slope, then of course you have soil from one side and no soil from the other side. And in that case, the checks of the retaining wall in terms of sliding and overturning and slope stability also um, apply on the full structure. Still, the basement wall itself is not tested or checked against stability. However, the structure in, in its entirety is tested against stability. Now, the design process is somewhat similar and somewhat different. Depends on the type of the basement wall. So if the, if the basement wall is integrated in the raft, then the design process is, of course, different between the retaining wall and the basement wall. But if the basement wall is part of a strip footing, then, of course, there is lot of similarities between the two things. Now usually basement walls are part of the raft because especially if you have like humid or moist regions because of the water table it could infiltrate from below the ground by seepage. Uh, what about shear walls? Now shear walls are an entirely different category like they are massively different between retaining walls and basement walls. Shear walls as the name suggests are walls that usually are used to carry shear on the entire building. Shear from the entire building can happen due to multiple facts. You could have shear due to earthquakes and you could have shear due to wind loads. And those shears are basically from all stories. You can see that each story will contribute to the shear in the shear wall. And the shear wall is usually assumed to be fixed. And the shear wall in a structure 
is your main lateral stability provider in case you do not have any uh, rigid frames. So it's kind of different and the force is different here because in basement walls the main forces you have are basically the soil pressure whereas in shear walls you have gravity loads and earthquake and wind load uh, loads. So that's a totally different ballpark. So yeah, that's basically the three possible wall types and well, we're gonna dive into that. Before I dive into that, I need to explain the different uh, connections of basement walls. Now, the first type of basement wall you could see is something called the cantilevered basement wall. So you have a basement wall like this, that is part of a bigger raft. Let's say the raft is like this. And of course the basement wall is surrounding the entire structure as you can see here, but of course I'm running out of space. I'm just not gonna draw the entire basement wall but you get the idea. So having a basement wall like this uh, could be a cantilevered basement wall if there is no connection between the basement wall and the slab above it. Like if the slab above the basement wall is not connected to the basement wall, then this is considered a cantilevered basement wall, meaning that you have a major uh, negative moment. So your main reinforcement for that basement wall is gonna be in the vertical direction. Also, having connections like this on the side might cause some horizontal moments which would need to be designed and need to be reinforced. That's the first type of a possible uh, basement wall. And why would you do that? Now, truth to be said, I don't really have a good reason for that. Maybe it's because of economics or something. You basically uh, fill the gap by hollow block uh, you construct a hollow block here and that's that's everything I wanted to talk about. That's everything you need here. Now, the other option here is basically the vice versa of that thing. Basically, when you have a retaining wall, a basement wall, and this basement wall is connected to the slab. So that's your slab now, and that's your basement wall. And the basement wall is connected to the slab. And if your basement wall is connected to the slab, then this becomes a... I mean, the action in the horizontal direction might be almost a simply supported beam or even a fixed support here and a roller here. Like you can assume that this is your fixed support and this is your roller or pin. Now, luckily for us, Autodesk Robot is gonna take care of that. So we are gonna model the raft. And uh, while we're modeling the raft, the finite element method with its stiffnesses is going to take care of the interaction between the raft and the wall. That's about the connection of the wall with the slab. And I'm gonna do both in one model because I want to show the difference here. There is another uh, issue here, which is basically having integrated columns versus uh, separate columns. Now, this is, might be uh, a no-brainer, but allow me to explain this for you. So, usually if you have a basement wall like this, it's a chunk of concrete, so a good practice if you have a basement wall is integrate a column into that basement wall. So basically just to have the column part of the basement wall and of course have the reinforcement in that column. That's a good idea because you are going to use basement wall anyway. But this comes of course with warnings. Uh, the warning being that now this column needs to, needs to be designed to account for the moment that is being caused by the lateral pressure of the um, soil and part of it carrying the load from the basement wall. So what I'm trying to say is that the stiffness of the column now plays a part in carrying parts of the load from the basement wall and you might be faced with higher moments uh, on that column. Of course, the other option is vice versa, where you basically disconnect, you disconnect the basement wall from the column, in that case the column doesn't help the basement wall at all, it's not considered a support for the basement wall, and you fill this gap with sealant or any type of uh, grouting that just doesn't allow the uh, water and soil to seep into the basement through the gap. So yeah, that's our two, those are two things you need to take care of. So, well, I think that we have basically covered almost everything we want to talk about, so let's take a look onto how to model this thing in Autodesk Robot. All right, so in Autodesk Robot, I'm gonna select my 3D building design and I'm gonna make me a basement. So I'm gonna take me, give it like three repetitions at distance of five. I'll apply that, oh, sorry, I'll add that. And then I will go to the, I'll add me in the Y axis, also three spaces or spans with distance of four because I don't want it to be one to one. I will add that. Now in the Z axis, I see zero to three. This is my story height, of course. 
I just want to mention that the story height is not something to be taken easily. You need to take it seriously because you have to plan if you are living in a hot uh, country where you have ACs and you have central AC and all that kind of stuff, then three meters might be a little bit short because, I mean, think about it. Uh, you might have a uh, inside this ceiling, you might have your AC ducts running through here, and then you need to cover those AC ducts by full ceiling, so you might actually lose around 40 to 50 centimeters of height due to this AC stuff, which means that you are left with 2.6 meters uh, minus the slab thickness of clear spacing. This might be too low. So keep that in mind when you plan. For now, I'll just keep it as is and apply. Sometimes the basement height is actually sometimes smaller than the height of a story for economical reasons, like we need the basement for storage, we don't need the basement to actually provide comfort for the occupants, so sometimes we actually try to make the basement wall, uh, try to make the basement height uh, smaller. I'll just apply that for now. Now, truth to be said, I should have applied negative three to zero because it's underground, but I don't care for now, I'll just apply and keep it like that. So okay, now to deal with this, you could apply it using walls, and you could apply it using shells. I'm a shell fan. I will make one uh, wall of this using walls and the rest using shells because I want to show the difference, the small nuances between those two um, walls. Okay, so what do I need here? Well, the first thing I need here is to basically offset my structure uh, one meter in all directions because I want to basically make me a raft. And the raft is, of course, going to like extend from the edges of the building by some centimeters. Usually it's 50 centimeters or 500 millimeters. But, but I'm going to extend it one meter because why not? Now here, the raft, uh, I'm only going to model the uh, basement wall. So I will basically do me a raft of, let's assume that it's a four-story building, so I'll make my raft of 40 centimeters, which means 400 millimeters. So having 400 millimeters, now I'm going to enable parameters of foundation elasticity. This had a detailed uh, video, which I recommend that you take a look on. I will link it up, uh, I will link it in the top right corner. So I just say thickness 400 as a raft, I go to parameters foundation elasticity. I think I've done this before, but I'll just double check very quickly and maybe I need to change something. I'll select near here, I clay, find sand or whatever. Notice I have explained this before. I'll just, for now, I'll just accept everything because uh, you can see the more details in the other build, in other video. So this is 17 meters in the A and in the B it was uh, 14 meters. For the kilopascals, how much the estimated foundation load is. So I'll just calculate this very quickly. We have uh, a story of a area of 50 multiplied by 12. Uh, this gives you a 180 meter square. Now, if you assume a load of um, a service sustained load of 15 kilonewtons per meter square, this is the load on one story. If you multiply this by four stories, you get the total load. If you divide by the area, 15 meters and 12 meters, you get 60. Or in other words, you multiply the sustained load action in service load, you, you multiply the service loads by the number of stories, and that's it. So it's 60 kilonewton meters. I'll just assume it here to be 60. I should see it here now. Let's hope it is. Yes, it's there. So I will do that. I'll add this. Now, before I continue, uh, to, um, to avoid any instability in the structure, I'm going to assume cakes and artificial value of 1 and KY artificial value of 1. Once again, I'll add that. I'll add this thickness and close and start modeling my raft. Now, raft is going to be rectangle, so 1, 2, 3. That's my raft foundation here. Of course, once again, I'm miss messing up, selecting neither the thickness nor the model, so I think uh, I should just quickly delete that and try again. So let's delete that very quickly, select again our shell, go to thickness 400, go to shell and basically draw our rectangles. So that's our raft now. Hoping that I didn't mess anything up. To check, I select my raft, double check very quickly. I see it's a shell. I see it is thickness 400R. And if you click on thickness, you can double check that indeed parameters of foundation elasticity are enabled. So everything seems to be fine and checks out. All right. So continuing with that, I'm going to go to my columns. I'll select my reinforced concrete column and just do me a dummy section of 400 by 400. Because why not? So 400 by 400, I'll add that, close, and well, start uh, doing my columns. So I need to be a little bit careful while I'm clicking. 
Now the columns come because it's for because it's robot. The columns come with built-in supports. Now those supports need to be eliminated, not because they are incorrect, but because you already are supporting the columns via the raft. If you forget those supports, then the raft will not feel the columns, and this is usually a mistake that people do. If you forget to remove the supports, then the column's load doesn't affect the raft at all, which is incorrect because the raft is the thing that should carry the concrete column. So I just basically go to front, select all my nodes, go to support, click delete, and apply that. So now all the supports should be deleted. All right, fantastic. So it seems everything is to be correct. Now I still need beams and so on. I just select me a beam very quickly here and, well, re reinforce concrete beam. I see a 300 by 450 defined before, so I'll select that. And well, I'm going to quickly beam my thing. So I'll just basically do this and do me very quick beams. Notice this is just a quick structure. Of course, we will have a structure from A to Z when we are going to take the architectural drawings and end up with the structural model. So I have my, my quick beams here and I close that. And now I'll go to my... I go to my floors. Before I do my floors, I think I'm still able to do my uh, retaining walls, basement walls, sorry. Now, if I go to walls, I'm going to make me the wall, basement walls using the wall module and using the shell module because I will show you the difference in the design of those things in the next video. For the basement wall, I'm going to assume 250 millimeters. Uh, it's usually between 200 millimeters and 300 millimeters, 250 being a nice guess. Of course, the factor here is how large and how high your basement wall is having longer distances in the horizontal and especially in the vertical causes more moment which of course needs more thickness to resist so i'll just go to my thicknesses here i'll assume a thickness of 300 this 250 sorry this time i don't have any foundation elasticity and i will say thickness 250 this is thickness 250 millimeter I'll add that and close it, and now I'm gonna assume me my drawing. Now, the walls are drawn strangely like a column. So what you do is, you basically click, because you're saying down here, so you click on the top and run, and while you are running, it will start drawing you with the wall. I'm dragging now, so you see the wall being drawn. It's kind of cool to see this happening. Once again, the wall comes with a built-in uh, pin support on the lower part of the wall. Now this doesn't make any sense because the wall is supported on the raft so of course I'm going to select this and go to my support and select delete. Now I don't think it will work. It doesn't because it's a nodal support. So I go to linear once again and try my luck here. I hope it does work this time. It doesn't so I go to planar. Otherwise I will have to delete my supports one by one. So let's hope that this one works. It doesn't work. Okay, so I need to delete them one by one. This is not fantastic, but well, it's something we have to do. All right, so delete, click here, and there we go. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, but it, it is what it is. So let's select that and keep selecting and deleting all those supports. So let's delete them one by one. I forgot a wall here, so I'll delete that wall that I forgot. And now I have all my walls ready. All right, fantastic. Now, the final thing I want to do is, well, I want to, I said that I want to have two types of drawing for the wall. The first type was using the wall, the second type was using my fan favorite, which is the shell. So I will delete this, though, this part of the wall and replace it. So I'll select here, once again, thickness 250. No, I need to select shell here. Thickness 250. Um, this time it's a shell. It's not a horizontal slab, and I'm gonna use rectangles to draw them, so you can see it's a different type of drawing, but it's drawing nonetheless. So I have drawn the X side using a shell. Notice, I haven't mentioned that, but notice that while I was drawing, I was making sure that the local X axis was always horizontal in all those slabs. You can see in all those slabs that the X axis is horizontal. The reason behind that is because I want my X axis to point at the um, at the horizontal moment and because I want to interpret the results later. Okay, so I have here my shells and I have here my walls and I also wanted to mention what happens if one of the walls or how do you deal with the wall if it's not connected to a column or a slab. Now to do this, uh, the only, it's very simple for the slab, you just have to gap it, that's all you need to do. Uh, now truth to be said, you might actually not have a big gap like this 
you might have a very small gap. Now to do that, you have two options. Option one is to release, and option two is to gap. I'm gonna take option two this time and gap, because I talked about the releases before, so now I'm gonna do the gap here. I'm gonna do the gap for this entire wall, so I'll delete my wall here, and I'll go to my Z axis. Now making a gap, I predict something, yeah? Making a gap will mess up the finite element generation of that one, to be honest. I'm, I'm expecting problems here. So I will basically, yeah, I'll just, I'll just do it, no problem. So I select here the, the Z axis. It, I think there will be problems I'm just predicting in the future here. So 2.75 here. I'll make the gap a little bit bigger because of the finite element problem. I'll apply that and close. And now I'll draw my wall again. This time the height of the wall is 2.75 down. 2.75 because I am at 2.75, so I'll click here to here. No, wait, that's incorrect. Why is it incorrect? Because I want my x-axis to go in one direction, so I click here to here to have the same axis sense. Now it doesn't work, so again, I need to select the height from here to here. Now I did that, so I hope it works now. So from here to here, and there we go. Everything seems to be fine. I gapped my wall. Now, once again, I need to delete my, uh, my, 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 my support. So, okay, fine. I'll delete this, delete this, and delete this. All right, fantastic. You may need to separate the uh, column from the wall, but I'll just leave it as is. I don't care. Um, I'll just leave the wall being part of the column because I think that it might be, from, for practical reasons, better because otherwise I would have to deal with the uh, ceiling of that thing. It depends on the engineer. Feel free to tell me in the comments what would you do. And of course, you can still do this via a gap or a um, a theoretical uh, a release. All right, fantastic. So I think everything seems to be fine. Now, I could try run this, but I don't. So I'll go to my sustain load action here. Now, there is no uh, there is no soil load. Soil loads are type are sustained loads and it depends on the code. I will try to make it code neutral, but if you want to be it code not code ne or neutral, you would go to manual combination and you would define the combination according to the code you want in which your lateral earth pressure takes the factor that you want. Now I'll keep it in dead with a big fat warning right now that this is only dead because I want my video to be code neutral. You have to create a combination and remember that dead load one uh, is for example your dead load and you could assume dead load 2 and you even can call it lateral or earth pressure earth of course there is no earth category but you need to remember that the second case here is your lateral earth pressure also you have live load so yeah those are my three cases and you need to pay attention to the cases when you do your combination all right fantastic so so what else does remain here well what remains is the loads and the slab, so let's slab that thing. I'll select floor, and I'll just make me a solid slab of thickness 250. Of course, there is a full slab series that has been done, and I will link the first video of that series in the top right corner. Now I'll select me a rectangle and slab that thing. Uh, I'll assume that there is no extensions of the slab. I think everything seems to be fine. Let me just check very quickly. I need to check because my error sensors are tingling somehow. Let me just check if this is all okay. Let's take a look. Floor, story, thickness 250. Let's take a look on the thickness. It should not have any elastic things. Yeah, perfect. Now, once again, I have not done any reduction of the moment of inertia because it's code dependent. But I want to remind you that in the ASI code, it's 0.25 uh, for the slab. But I want it to be code neutral. So I tell you, hey, you should do this. And there are videos who talked about where I showed you that but I will not do it today. All right, fantastic. So everything seems to be fine. Um, let's apply some loads, right? So let's go to the live load. I'll apply me a four kilonewton meter load downwards on that thing here. I should also apply on the raft, to be honest. So I have not done that. Now, how do I do that? Well, I need to select add. And now I have a better idea. Maybe I do this, click on apply on and select those two things. It doesn't. That's odd. Control select. Okay, there we go. We have it. So I'll apply this on the live load. Now I have live load on both the raft and the slab. I know the raft on the outside should not have live load, but we can ignore that. It's better to have a little bit more. Also, raft uh, does have earth pressure on the outside. 
but I will now focus on the basement wall. The raft here is not really my interest today. I'm just saying that what, what I'm missing and simplifying here is something that I wanted to keep an eye on if you want to do a model of full story structure. Remember, my videos are usually focusing on one thing and to try to be focused, I'm focusing on the basement walls now. So I'll go to my dead load, I'll select dead load here, I'll apply me a 10 Q Newton going downwards on the dead load, I'll add that. I think I messed up. Okay, I'll add that now, I'll select those things, I'll apply, so everything seems to be fine. Finally, there is letter earth pressure, so I'll select my earth. You, there are two options for that, and I've explained this in previous videos. Option one is to go to the liquid pressure and calculate the unit, the equivalent unit weight of the liquid by basically multiplying the unit weight of the soil by the active or passive or at rest um, soil coefficient. The other option is to go to loads and go to special loads and select soil pressure. Those are two possibilities. Now, uh, the list of objects I want to apply my soil pressure to are gonna be those dudes, so I'll select them. I hope they are here now, perfect. Now here, opposite to the local service system. Let's take a look if this is what I want. Is it opposite? Not always, but maybe it will work for some. So I'll just continue here and I will fix whatever I see later. Now, I will not say apply, because we don't know what will be applied. So I go to parameters, basically, and start selecting. Now, my structure is not moving neither towards nor against the soil, because it's being surrounded in soil from all sides. Now, the soil profile here, I'm just going to assume this. Because I have started my basement at 0 to 3, the level of the soil should go all the way up to 3, so that the soil or the structure sees the soil. I think I'm done with this. I have explained this before, so I'll just basically... Um, well, I'll just basically apply this. You can see the loads, the results. It calculates those things. I'll apply that and apply here. So now you see the soil pressure. Now, not everywhere did it work because some of the panels did have the force on the outside. Some of them did have the force on the inside. It's very easily fixable. You go to geometry, go to additional attributes, and, or sorry, you go to properties and select local panel directions and flip the Z. So, well, you change the local Z sense. Now, I don't want all of them, that's incorrect. I want only the panels that um, do have the problem. So, those are those panels, I guess. So, I'll select those. I'm trying to be a little bit gifted by my selection. Little tricks here. Uh, yeah, I think now I'm done and golden. If I apply that, it flips and everything seems to be fine. So, yeah, that is the modeling of the basement wall. Now, the only thing I need to do now is to run the analysis and hope it works. So if you run the analysis now, you get no support error, but that's fine because there is a raft and there are no instabilities. So those are good news, basically. All right, so basically what I did just now is I have applied some stories here and basically I repeated the basement story and removed the walls. So I ran the analysis and let's take a look on the results. Now, if you select case by case, live load, of course, there is not much. Earth, and you can see that Earth seems to be really high in MX6. Those are the horizontal moments, and we're not surprised, as you can see, the horizontal moment is on the edges, that is true, because it's the edge, but it's also near those points uh, where you basically have a connection between the column and the shear wall and the basement wall. This is about XX. What about YY? About YY should be the typical cantilever action, and you can see this exactly happening here. The cantilever action happens in all the retaining walls, regardless of if it's connected or not, with a small difference being that if you have a connection here, and it's a moment-carrying connection, then you have the negative moments here, uh, which will affect the slab if it's moment-carrying, if it's a rigid support, if it's not a rigid support, because I told you it depends here, I put here a roller, but it might be a rigid support. If it's not a rigid support, then you have to release that and take a look on the bridge video, pedestrian bridge video, where I discussed this. I'll link it uh, here on the top right corner. Of course, if it's free, then there is no moment transfer. To finalize this, the first parter of a two-parter, because next time we'll be designing this thing. To finalize this, I'll just go to... Um, the results and click panel cuts here and basically do me a panel cut uh, in the XY plane 
and hit the click here basically i'll apply that now this should be showing me the x exponent so let's take a look on that uh, on the cut yes indeed it's the x exponent now if i select x exponent on the map so that i can see it you can see the moments uh, now maybe you cannot see this so i'll go to 3d xy and i let him show me uh, the story number one or base basically okay so now we can see the base um, if you want to go even further you can basically delete this but I mean um, let's move the let's remove this very quickly let's remove the um, map here to see and you can basically see here the there we go yeah you can see here the moment on the cut or you can just go to the cut here click on it and click here and say diagram analysis and then you can see the panel cut as a diagram where you can see the moments on the X of course typically the moment is high on the outside near the corner and it's larger in the inside near the spans also notice that because my concrete column is connected to the wall you can see that the concrete column is acting as a support if you go to a map diagram so members, you can see the moments of the lo of the columns being really highly loaded. Um, and why I guess let's normalize that thing and you can see the columns like feeling, yeah, there we go. There we go. Feeling the moment on the uh, from the wall basically. So yeah, what else can we do? Well we can go to cut maybe, just go to the cuts here. And I want this time to change it to be to the XZ plane. I'll click here or here basically. I'll apply that. Now this shows moment MXX. I don't want moment MXX. Wait, I need it to be in the XZ, I said. Passing through that point. There we go. Now this shows me. Uh, yeah, now this shows me the moment in the... In the X, I don't want this, I want it in the Y, so you click moments, YY, and the cut. And you also click on moment YY the map, so you can see this now showing the moment YY. If you take a look here, you can see that moment Y is as expected. Uh, it's going to be very high in the bottom, and there is nothing on the top, and you can see the moment being in the inside. Let me just, let me just remove this very quickly. And go to the here to the diagrams and just select me some filled and in plane so that you can see it you can see in the plane that you can even differentiate if you want you can see in the plane that indeed there is negative on the bottom outside and positive at the top there is nothing on the edge here because it's free but if you go to the other one you can see there are moments here because it's not free on the edge so yeah uh, also there is a nuance here I, uh, that I might discuss next time I see some mesh problems here. The reason behind that is the other shop is trying to connect the wall here. The wall here is trying to connect with the um, separation here, which causes all kinds of crazy finite elements that need to be connected with the slab. That's the reason why I have problem here. So yeah, that is a quick rundown of the modeling of a basement wall in a structure. Of course, we are gonna try design that thing and take a look on robots design capabilities uh, next time so stay tuned for future videos in the end i hope that you liked the video and that it's beneficial for you of course if you like the video then please well subscribe share like comment and so on especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel as per usual this is the civil engineering essentials channel and we will catch you in the next video